So can you like briefly tell us about you know that story, how how you went from one place to another? What what eventually led you to Finland? The um, well, I was brought, brought, brought up in a big city and uh, you know uh, raised as a Catholic, went to Catholic school, and I think um, I, I've always been a very uh, artistic uh, kid and uh, uh, always been struggling to kind of find uh, uh, inspiration and, and to, to keep myself being creative uh, because the creative mind is, is you know can be a very hungry mind, and if it's not being fed with the, the right sort of things then I think you can start to get kind of depressed, you know, and I think I was very depressed living in, in London and not really living the, the life that brings me sort of fulfillment, both sort of creatively and, and, and spiritually, you know, so, so uh, I kind of had to break out of that. And uh, I was very inspired by the old mythology and uh, Viking Age. I was studying Viking Age studies and everything. So I got very into to Norway and I, I learned Norwegian for three years at university. And, I went over there and lived in, in Karashok uh, with the Sami people and, and I was at the Sami school so I was learning to reindeer herd and making things out of wood and, and the skins and living living off the land, you know, learn, learning to do that. And I think that was something very good and very inspiring for me uh, being a guy who grew up in a city, you know. Uh, you you uh, you should know how to survive and and how to live, m you know, more in harmony with nature. And th that's the thing about Scandinavia that I, I admire a lot is that uh, people here are very uh, wary of their surroundings. And I know that's a lot of their industry is involved. You know, for example, in forestry, forestry and things like that. But you 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 um, it feels like people they sort of think of it as their uh, duty to to be. Um, you know, to know how to survive outdoors and to, to be very, um, you know, skilled at, uh, uh, at uh, you know, fishing and, and, and hunting and things like that. So I think that's an important thing as a human being not to forget where you, where you come from, you know. You think a lot of the musicians that partook of in Hex Vessel brought that culture with them, with their music. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, everybody that meets them says that these, these guys are like, uh, you know, out of the out of the forest, you know, they're more like forest creatures, you know, so when we say we're hex vessel from the forests of Finland, we're not really lying because uh, it, it really is a kind of different culture uh, there, especially uh, if looking at Scandinavia as a whole, since um, they're maybe not as sort of westernized and as uh, as uh, international as uh, as some of the other the other countries. I mean, city like Stockholm and 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 Oslo are, are, are quite different from Helsinki, which is I, I think still like a, a you know a growing a growing city. So. And how did you come across uh, these musicians? Uh, I I saw I, I saw a band called Dark Buddha Rising, um, and uh, it was my favorite band for a long time. And I saw them play live, and I, I kind of just fell in love with these guys. I thought that the, these, they were the most amazing people I've seen. And I've always had this thing that, where I, I believe that the band uh, that you play in should be like the band of your dreams, you know, and the people that you play with should be these very inspiring people. And, you know, I grew up like be, being uh, crazy about the doors and things like that. And I, I always felt that, like, when Jim Morrison was on stage, he's probably looking at Ray Manzarek and thinking, wow, I play with Ray Manzarek, and Ray Manzarek is looking at him, and he's thinking, yeah, Jim Morrison, you know. They're like stars to each other and, and so happy to be in the band together. And I think uh, it's a bit like falling in love. You, you, you just know, you know, you know the chemistry is there when you see the person. It's just instant. It's like a flash of lightning. And when I saw them, I was like, I have to work with these guys. They approached me and, and, and asked me to sing on one of their tracks uh, before I even had a chance to, to talk with them. Um, so, so a few of those guys joined in and helped me to sort of back up my, my, my solo stuff. But as they joined, uh, it sort of evolved more and, and more. And then some guys left, and, and we, we were left with a couple of guys from Dark Buddha. And uh, we they, 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 uh, we brought in some other people as well. And it's been a, it's been a really nice um, way to, to, to put this band together because it's come together very organically um, and very naturally. Um, uh, we, we're not sort of like a manufactured band in any way, you know. We didn't pick each other because of musical skills alone. It's really because of uh, kind of that magic feeling when you see somebody and you're like, that's it, that's the guy. You know, so. <clears throat> and how does um, Hex Vessel as a musical outfit change from the studio to the road? Um, well, in the studio, I mean, it's, it's, it's sort of like the I think of it like as a conversation. So you have a private conversation with someone, you know, you pick a quiet place and you have a more personal, intimate conversation. Or then you have a conversation with a lot of people 
and you 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 have to change the 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 tone and also your, your the tools of the way you speak to 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 engage people you know uh, having a conversation with a few people at a table is is very different from from just the personal conversation so i think of the studio as much more of an intimate uh, small you know uh, personal conversation and then the the live is, is has to be much more of a kind of richer uh, experience so that's we try to make it that it's it's engaging in different levels live and it's more physical uh, than than mental and internal so I like to think of it as kind of like uh, you try to try to share uh, what you're doing m in a much wider way uh, yeah. and so we do that with the sound and and also the structure of the songs we change them a lot and and I always think that it's better when people come away from a show and they say wow that was something different and it was also uh, better you know in some way than the album because you you shouldn't do something that's exactly like the album if people want the album they can just listen to the album it's yeah. it, i think you know both things then stand on their own and they inform each other so people come away from the show and they love the album even more and vice versa you know they listen to the album they come to the show and they like the show even more so that's kind of what we're trying to do and when you're in the studio how much of the material gets kind of written as you guys jam in the studio, as you guys bring it together? How much of it is vision you've already laid down in notes and paper? And um, I know, I know the, I mean, I, I know how the guys uh, do their, do things. So of course, there's surprises, um, you know, pleasant accidents. But um, uh, I think I know that if I have a certain idea, I have a, a rough vision of how that's going to end up. Um, but I know I have to give it to the guys for them to do their thing with it. And I, I kind of know, um, you know, that, that CMI is going to do some far out solos and he's going to take the guitar into the right direction for the way they want the song to go. So it's, it's kind of like uh, you, you set the car on the road and then you let it go and uh, along the way it can you know take some twists and turns but you always know you're getting to that destination in the end and that it's going to be a very good you know end result uh, based on the people who <coughs> are playing so they all have a chance to really bring their character into the music and, and make it what it is do they have free reign so they have free reign to kind of yeah unleash. sure and yeah and we c we come up with ideas in the studio you know just uh, if someone someone says hey it should have a gong here well yeah go play the gong then you know even if they're the bass player or they're you know that it's not their job to bash some drums they can go and do it uh if if they have the idea you know and i, I really believe in kind of entertaining all aspects like of, of of um in the sound you know if people hear certain things like oh wow this would sound so cool with some bells chiming and and, and you know you have to try all these things uh, and do them because it's it's part of um you know, opening opening up and bringing yourself into the into the the picture, which is what it's all all about with Hex Vessel. It's kind of like the 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 dialogue between um, you know the the line between what's what's uh, spiritual and what's you know in, into into reality. Kind of thing. And now you're balancing Beast Milk on the side as well. Yeah, yeah, we have that. It was uh, you know uh, it's a jam band that we we did for, for just having some fun, and and it it turned out into it's a really good project and. Uh, we're doing uh, a lot of live stuff with that band as well, so quite busy with uh, with the music stuff. Uh, you mainly started out in the black metal uh, scene. Yeah, I started in out in black black metal. Um, yeah, and uh, somehow got myself involved with some some Norwegian black metal bands uh, and um, a kind of UK Norwegian black metal band with with Code. But um, yeah. But what eventually took you from Norway to Finland? Uh, well, I uh, the I um, I met a Finnish woman and and we uh, we 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 got together and and got married and moved to Finland. Um, kind of, it's it's always been a dream of mine. I fell in love with Finland back in 2002. We recorded an album there. We were on a Finnish label. We decided to go there. We spent three three or four weeks there, and I just uh, fell in love with the place. It felt like this is where I've been searching for all my life and then I, I happened to fall, fall in love with a wonderful Finnish uh, girl and, and she um, we just talked about the idea of one day moving back to Finland and then we just thought why don't why, why don't people do these things they talk about you know they always have these dreams and they never act on them so let's let's just do it you know no matter what the consequence is I, I mean it's not easy to have a job there and I didn't know how it was going to end up but we, uh, we it's it's been really great best choice I ever made. Would Hex vessels have seen the day of light in a country other than Finland, do you think? Uh, maybe. Maybe <coughs> it would have been something, you know, kind of different. I think that it's very it's been very informed by that move and by the the 
you know Finnish culture and living there um, and I, I think that's kind of interesting to a lot of people it's interesting to to Finns for sure uh, and then it's also to, to others who who maybe have a dream of doing something uh, you know not necessarily moving to Scandinavia but moving somewhere or changing their life and becoming um, everything that they can be you know um, so, so it's, it's a maybe it's an inspiration for others as well.